want to be saved, and week after week after week, you reject. The people of Daytona Beach Farmer's Market, you have concluded that Isaiah 53, verse 3, is prophecy fulfilled in 2015, August 1st, up-to-date modern of the King James 6011 Bible. And yet again, I know you can hear me. And yet again, if I had a table up here of uh, Budweiser and cheeseburgers, you come running. I would have to order more. I would have to call up and send me more beer, send me more hamburgers, because these pigs are devouring it. And yet I offer to you free salvation, free life after death. I hold you out something better than death insurance. I hold you true life insurance, and you won't even step out. You reject the Son of God. You say he's too loud, he's too angry, he's too this, he's too that. But if I had a rock concert set right here with the electric guitars bearing, the drums bearing out, that you can hear blocks away, you'd be up here bebopping and dancing and half naked. Oh! But if I get up here with an instrument to get my voice out, and I tell you about God, he's angry. You need more love. Right now. Step out. Come to us. And we will show you how to be saved. We've got Bibles. We will open them up. We will guide you to what God expects of you for salvation. And you do not have to despise. You do not have to reject the salvational gift. You can go against the crowd. You can go against the world. man has a petition over here, you put your name on that petition, he will do and go wherever he know, needs to do with that petition to get a law signed. But I'm telling you, if you put your name in the last book of life signed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will put your name into eternity, you will put your name in the streets of Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, you will be putting your name and your soul in the finished atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will not ever perish. Putting your name down the last book of life is being born again. God, give me that pen. Let me refill the birth certificate out. Lord, that's not a birth certificate. That's a book. Yeah, that's the book of life. Put your name down. See, that birth certificate that they give with your mom turns into a death certificate given by the doctor. The same profession that says he's born will be the same profession to say he's dead. That's your tombstone. I was born September 6, 1968. A lot of you wish he never was. September 6, 1968, I gave birth, I gave birth, my mom gave birth to me, a doctor handed her a piece of paper that I hold today, he's been born, and I have been a sinner since I've been born, ask my wife, ask my mother, ask my children, ask my teachers, ask my boss, ask my neighbors, ask I grew up Roman Catholic, Polish Roman Catholic. Now, if you know what Polish Roman Catholic is, we are the most diehard of the diehard. We are more diehard than the Italians. 
because most of the folks are Polish. That never saved me. I was sprinkled, dipped, or whatever, I don't remember. I ate Jesus, I drank Jesus. I came out of the broom closet with the priest and wasn't molested, thank God. But I was going to die, I don't know when, and I was going to go to hell with religion. April 21st, 1987, I had a man, Joe Caswell, open a King James Bible. Showed me I was going to die. I knew that. I was one of them people that believed when they put you in a casket, you were still alive. I, too many horror stories, too much pepperoni pizza, something, but that's what I believe. I believe even though you were in a casket, you were still going to live. I fear death. I don't like burns. When that man laid upon me, hell. Well, I don't want to die, and I don't want to burn. And when he showed me April 21st, 1987, out of the Bible that Jesus is the truth, and the life. April 21st, 1987, in the afternoon, I knelt down at my grandma's coffee table with that man, Mr. Caswell, put his arms around me. I prayed that God would save a sinner such as me to be merciful to me, to wash me, to make me clean, and I can put on my tombstone. Born September 6th, 1968, reborn April 21st, 1987. His name is not on the death certificate. His name is the book of life. So when I die tomorrow or next week or next month, I will be absent and present with the Lord upon closing my eyes. My tombstone may read dead, but I ain't dead. A man of sorrows. That man is God. The first funeral, seems to be about death today. The first funeral that God showed up to, Lazarus' grave. upon 
you are going to die, and you can't do nothing about it. That is the love of God. Isaiah 53. Acquainted with grief, and we hide as if our face is from Him. I wonder how many Christians are here in this camp. Oh, I wish he'd just shut up. I'm talking about saved Christians. I wish he wouldn't say nothing. He's embarrassing me in front of my friends. And I've had some of you tell me that testimony. That's a shame. And yet the Bible says if you deny him, he's not going to deny you. You're saved, always saved. But he'll deny you the reign with Christ. Now, I don't know. But if you want to despise Jesus Christ in this camp, and if I do get a city, if I'm honorable enough by the Lord to, be, to get a city, I don't know. Imagine God putting you sitting on, I wish you'd be quiet, put, having God put you for a thousand years under this loud mouth. Say, you didn't want to stay and do nothing for me. He wanted to do something for me. So I'm just going to have you a thousand years sit under that man that did something while you listen to him. And you're going to listen to him for a thousand years and learn how to be a real Christian. But he's despised not only among the world, he's despised by his own believers. I'd rather catch a bass than hear a sermon. I'd rather find out what's going to happen with that, uh, that American Idol than find out what the preacher's going to say Wednesday night. My family's outing's more important than my pastor. Well, probably with your family outings, the hell with them, because probably most of them are lost. And you'll stand an account before God one day in your failure. And yet the Bible says, we hid our faces from Him. When your pastor gets up to preach Sunday morning, is your face there? Or is it hidden? I don't ever read about Peter taking a vacation. I don't ever read about Paul going on a trip. Last time I heard Peter, let's go fishing, is before the Lord re re revealed himself after the resurrection, and after he set them off on their commission, after they were commissioned and said, we're going to go serve the Lord, there was no more fishing. There was preaching and living. Goodbye, family. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, town. Goodbye, all. I'm going to go serve Jesus. Whatever I do, I am not going to despise Him. That's saved or lost. Surely He has borne our griefs. How many hours have you poured out to the Lord Jesus Christ, your trials, your tribulations, your troubles, your tears, your anguish, your pain. And He never, ever tells you to go away. Come back another time. I don't have time for you. Never. This is the baby that was born in Bethlehem. This baby had already shown Isaiah what to write by inspiration. This baby in heaven said, Isaiah, write about me. If we were to find out before we were born the things were going to go on in our life, I think we would have pleaded to God not to have been born. He carried our 
our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten of God, afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. The Lord Jesus Christ. You can't make a movie about on how much they abused him. The Bible says that his back is described as furrows in the ground that a farmer has put an instrument to to tear up the ground, tear up the soil. That is described by his back by the cat of nine tails of the muscular Roman soldiers. Roman soldiers were not weak. They were mighty men. And when they took their fists and beat Jesus' face, they did it with all endurance and all for the government. When Jesus was beaten and whipped, it was to the fullest of the satisfaction of army men to get rid of the enemy. They plowed his back. They punched his face. They pulled his beard out. The Bible says that you couldn't even recognize he was beyond detail of a man's appearance when they were finished with him. How you doing? What, he, what church? He suffered. He bled, and He died, that you may have life. He beyond suffered. No morphine, no Advil, no aspirin, no lawyer, no doctor. Upon pain, his body flushing, his body vibrating, his muscles twixing, his nerves going out, ramage of pain, his blood dripping. And yet he laid those holy hands down for the iron to go through him. The right, the left, and his feet. And all that pain, he gave his arms, and he gave his feet. And his deep, trying gulps of breath upon the cross. He fathomed out the words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In agony of victory, because he knew he was going to get victory, but in agony of pain and suffering, he turned that repentant thief and gave him salvation before he died. With no baptism, with no church attendance, he saved that repentant thief and then died and deposited our sins into hell and came out of the grave victorious, sitting at the right hand of the Father. And if you choose to reject that Jesus of the Bible, that Jesus one day will reject you.
And that is why you will go into hell. Hell is full of Christ rejecting souls. <clears throat> you need on your tombstone to be saved. Two birth dates to be saved. <clears throat> now turn to John chapter 3. There's so much in Isaiah 53, but for the sake of time, we're done with Isaiah 53. But John chapter 3. John 3, 3. Jesus answered, said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You've got to have a second birth. That's not a requirement. It's a must. He says, ye must be born again. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in the mother's womb and be born? That's a logical question. That's a proper question, Nicodemus. Look what Jesus said. The very Jesus we've been preaching about. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water. That's the woman. You know, the water breaks. The food inside the cavity where the baby's kept. That's the first birth. But look what Jesus says more. Born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. In order to go to heaven, in order to go before the Father, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And here is the prerequisite of that salvation. you got to be born of a woman. And then, you got to be born of the Spirit. He said, well, how do I do that? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I'm here to tell you the Bible truth. I know 99% of a surety, a statement I'm going to make, upon faith. Everyone who's in a graveyard today, under dirt, underground, is a Bible believer today. And if you die without Christ, Hearing this message about Christ the Gospel, when you die, you will be a Bible believer at your death. Now, you can be a Bible believer in heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, joy and victory and enjoy the words of God, or you can be a Bible believer by rejecting Jesus Christ and by being buried, and in hell, lifting up his eyes in torment. That's Bible. You need to be born, but I see everyone here fits that qualification. Even if you were a test tube or a Petri dish child, you had to have an egg from a female. That qualifies. Your mother may have left you, but you still have a mother. And in John